Good morning, friends. We're going to start by talking about our two vocabulary words for today. Let's look at our first word. The word is natural resources. Natural resources. Water is a natural resource. Just like the sentence said, water is a natural resource. It is found in nature and we use it to drink. What is a natural resource near your house? Our next vocabulary word is weave. Weave. I used colored yarn to weave a scarf. To weave means to lace together many strands of yarn into cloth, a blanket, or a rug. This picture shows colorful yarn being weaved for a scarf. What would you like to weave to give as a gift? We have our two sight words for this week, but mainly we're gonna be focusing on this first one today. The word is where. Where? Where do the roses grow? Now, this word wear is not like the clothes that you wear. It's a question word, just like they gave in the sample. Where do the roses grow? Let's start by spelling it together. While we spell, take your finger and practice writing each letter in the air. W H E R E. Now, let's practice using it in a sentence. Think about something that maybe you have lost before. You would ask yourself, where is my car key? Now, it's your turn. Where is my... Nice job. Let's look at our story for the week. Before we start, Reach your arms all the way up to the sky for a good stretch. Take one big breath in and let it out. Our story this week goes right along with our essential question. How can nature be used to make new things? While we read this story, we are going to practice our comprehension skill, re-read. Good readers Go back and reread the text again if they don't understand something the first time. Our story this week is called Bread Comes to Life. Now, this is a nonfiction book, meaning that it is a real story. So no, the bread isn't really going to come to life and start talking. But we will get to see how people use nature to make something new. Bread. Bread comes to life, a garden of wheat and a loaf to eat. Bread is the food we eat every day. So many kinds, so many ways. White bread, black bread, small bread, tall bread, thin bread, twin bread, dinner rolls, bread with holes, hard, day-old, tough bread, soft, squishy, fluff bread, bread is toast. Bread is crumbs. Bread is pizza. Bread is buns. How is bread made? Where is it from? This baker makes his bread from scratch by sowing wheat in his backyard patch. 
Soon those seeds send down roots. Let's reread this page. This baker makes his bread from scratch by sowing wheat in his backyard patch. Soon those seeds send down roots. When I first heard the word sow wheat in his backyard patch, I didn't quite understand. Now that I reread it and used my picture to help, it seems like sowing means to spread out or plant the seeds. And sprout into shoots of bright green grass. The days pass, and that grass grows into sturdy blades, tall and straight, finely made with budding heads and bristly hair, gently waving in the air. When the crop is ripe and old, the tops are bowed and streaked with gold. And every head of wheat contains many tiny finished grains. Time to cut the golden field. Gather up the backyard yield. Stack up piles of sun-dried stalks. Rub them in a threshing box. It's the simple old-time miller's craft of separating wheat from chaff. What's left are seeds, a hefty load. Many times the number sowed. And each new grain of harvest wheat looks just like a loaf to eat. Now is the hour to grind those grains into whole wheat flour. Let's reread this page. Now is the hour to grind those grains into whole wheat flour. When I first read this page and heard the word flower, I was confused because I don't see any flowers. But now that I reread it and used the picture to help, I can tell they're talking about baking flour. With simple tools and easy rules, it's on with the show to make up some dough and bring fresh bread to life. Yeast, honey, water, flour, salt, oil, and muscle power. Dump it, thump it, dust it, knead it, squash it, stretch it. Toss it. Set it aside to rest and rise. It grows and grows to twice the size. Punch it down. Give it some shape. Let it rise again. Put it in to bake. Slice it fresh. It's better than cake. Whatever the shape it finally takes, wherever the place it finally bakes, every day we are blessed with a mountain of bread. It's the staff of life. May all be fed.
Remember, this week we're focusing on the long O sound. Long vowels are easy because the letter just says its name. So the long O sounds like O. Remember, we get that sound O by simply adding that sneaky silent E to the end of a word. Time to stand up and get some wiggles out and let's sing our song for the week, A Goat in a Boat. Remember, this song usually requires a partner, so if they're available, grab your parent, your brother, your sister, or just an imaginary friend for this dance. Hi everybody, I'm Brandon. And I'm Ruth. And we're here to perform the song, A Goat in a Boat. Make sure when you do this that you have a partner so that you can do the back and forth whisper, whisper part with your partner. You don't need a whole lot of room, but you do need to make sure you have a buddy with you. Here we go. A goat in a boat. Nice job. Take a seat and let's play a quick game to review our long O sound. I'm going to say a word. If you hear the sound O in the word, like in the word cone, you're going to wave your hands in the air and say, yes, way. If you do not hear the sound O, you're going to cross your arms like an X and say, no way. Listen to these words. The first word is robe. If you hear that O sound in the word robe, put your hands in the air and say, yes way. If you did not hear the sound O, cross them like an X and say, no way. The word was robe. Yes way. Next word is note. Yes way. Next word is box. No way. Next word, cop. No way. Next one, bone. Yes way. Next one is dot. No way. And your last word is home. Yes way. That's it for today, boys and girls. I'll see you next time.